what is up everyone good morning good evening good afternoon hope you're having a good day so one thing in the news that i saw pop up brett Favre apparently stealing from welfare to help build a volleyball stadium for his daughter's college uh don't know a lot of the details about it we're about to react to a video that'll give us all the details we've missed all the details we need to know I only know a little bit, but yeah, let's get into it. Hope you guys enjoy. Here we go. This is Jeff Pearl, a best-selling author of several sports titles about legends across the sports landscape. We're talking people like Walter Payton, Roger Clemens, and Barry Bonds. While preparing his 2016 book titled Gunslinger, a written biography of Packers legend Brett Favre, Jeff interviewed over 500 people and worked his ass yeah. off, spending time with Brett's mom. He's got siblings, a really questionable aunts, uncles, past. Put in the work. He did it the right way. From so what I Jeff know. Jeff would say what he said on Twitter this week, you know Brett must have reached the all-time low. On the day of extended far relations, I want to share some. I wrote a biography of the man that was largely glowing. Football heroics, overcoming obstacles, practical joker, etc. Yeah, it included his grossness, addictions, and treatment of women, but overall, it was fairly positive. And looking at it now, if I'm being brutally honest, I'd advise people not to read it. He's a bad guy. He doesn't deserve the icon treatment. He doesn't deserve acclaim, image rehabilitation, warm stories of gridiron glory. His treatment of Jennifer Sturger was inexcusable. And now, taking money that was designated to help poor people in his state and funneling it yeah, true. Jack's notes. Because Mississippi is one of the is poorest. So grotesque. So or it might be the absolute I don't know poorest how someone like that looks in the US. I just don't. So sincerely, don't buy the book. Don't take it out from the library. Leave it. There are so many better people worthy of your reading hours. So he was hot, and here's why. Recently, text messages between Brett Favre and former Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant have been leaked. No, we Hold on. I gotta I run that back real quick. If you were to pay me, is there any way the media can find out where it came from and how much? No, we never have had that information publicized. I understand you being uneasy about that, though. Let's see what happens on Monday with the conversation with some of the folks at Southern. Maybe it will click with them, hopefully. Okay, thanks. We just got off the phone with Phil Bryant. He is on board with us. We will get this done. Mm. So, like, that's the sketchiest part of this whole thing. Governor Phil Bryant pushed to move welfare funds, which were intended for the nation's literal poorest residents, into a fund that would be used by Brett Favre to build a volleyball stadium on the campus of the Because apparently, like, he's claiming that he didn't know. But he still has fame and notoriety that afford him endorsement deals and sponsorships it's hard to imagine that man flat out stealing money intended for poor families so brett Favre's character has been like the fact that like point, so he even asked if will. anybody will find out brett like got eight million dollars that's what puts you in a funds. in a bad that spot that's when it looks really bad because like apparently they're claiming the that fun. he if didn't know away with this whole situation without where the money was coming out, from you know he wouldn't take this how they're trying to find out building the volleyball facility and according to the text messages the governor that he was working with was going to throw his name on the bill this is all despite the fact that it was funded with money intended for struggling families in their home state they did not care at all but when one of the governor's goons got arrested for misusing funds a lot of it got traced right on back to brett which is how he got connected to this whole situation in the first place and now that these text messages between him and the governor have come out, maybe they finally found the smoking gun belonging to one of Mississippi's most notorious cowboys. Now, Brad's gonna try to deny any knowledge of wrongdoing. Yep, the text there messages it is. show him asking, is there any way the media can find out where it came from and how much? A question that no truly innocent man is concerned with. One of the Facts. wildest parts of reading through this story was the fact that former Mr. And that's the part Governor that makes him look Bill the worst. Bryan has denied for years having any real involvement in pushing the welfare funds to the volleyball stadium has now had direct text messages between him and Brett Favre. And the one I just can't get over were the discussions to throw the governor's name on the building. Like, that's like, I'm going to do this dirt, but I'm going to be proud of it. And I want to be celebrated. 
these dudes really be doing the lowest possible most scummy sh imaginable but then pass it off as something high and righteous so you stole money from the poorest people in your state my home state by the way which is the poorest state in the entire country so you stole from the poorest people in the poorest state then put it into a vanity project for your boy and had a nerd to call it philanthropy it's crazy imagine if this whole thing would have yeah, went through and he would have had his name on that building he would have been forever associated with unselfishness and community building. But really, you a scummy ass criminal thief who feel like you're above the people you put there to serve, which made it easy to take money that was meant for their basic needs, all in order to fund whatever book, all in order to fund whatever BS project your friends brought to you. And Brett Favre in the same boat because he pushed for this every step of the way. Hell, it looked like it was his idea. But other than that, bros, it's time to jump in. So, y'all know what time it is, man. Shoot it. Yeah, no Geek app, you should call Flip all the to give to the rich. She's controlling these budgets and making sure influential. Investigative journalism, link to her full article is down in the description. She says that in July 2017, Brett Favre attended a meeting at USM, which included a few influential people. One of the most important people at the meeting was I've Nancy Moon, the founder sense. of the Mississippi Community Education Center, which was responsible for divvying out tens of millions of dollars in federal welfare funds to help the state. In this case, she kind of plays a role like a reverse Peter Pan, straight up stealing from the poor to give to the rich. She's controlling these budgets and making sure that her friends and acquaintances get the money they want. Then Ooh. whatever's left over, if anything, maybe that yeah, that's goes to up, the bro. people it was actually intended to help. Nancy New, Reverse Peter Pan, plays a big role in this, so remember that name. You got the now former welfare agency director, John Davis, some USM athletic staff members, and a few other people as well. This dude apparently is a former pro wrestler. Random, I know, but it's true. Now, according to the minutes or the... Yeah. Like, that that's the worst part. He knew what he was doing. He knew where the money was coming from. So, I mean, like, yeah, you, you really messed up, bro. You you really messed up. Like, you can't do that. You can't do that. see that typically helps poor families with food, health care, and basic needs. Now, the scope of these departments can go slightly outside of that, but federal law strictly prohibits temporary assistance funds being used for construction. Therefore, in order to yep. get the funds, Brett and everybody in the meeting had to come up with an agreement that looked like they were actually helping needy families when they was really just helping themselves. And check this out, the Mississippi Department of Human Resources, their lawyers were the ones who guided Brett and company through the process of finessing the system and redirecting the welfare funds. So they ran them through a process that involved USM taking all the athletic facilities on campus and leasing those to the SMA Foundation for one dollar. So then the foundation could turn right back around and lease the facilities that they just leased for a dollar back to the evil Peter Pan's nonprofit organization for five million dollars. Now the process has since been called fraudulent and Nancy New has a list of violations that she's been charged with. A little bit more on that in a second. Regardless of what would happen in the future, at that time, Brett was yeah. off to a hot start funding his project to get a volleyball stadium built for his daughter. But USM has a strict policy on starting construction, and it kind of works like guaranteed money in an NFL contract. So let's take the Kyler Murray contract, right? Of his total amount, $160 million yeah. of it is fully guaranteed. Well, that $160 million in full has to be put into a trust by the team before the contract is signed. In a similar fashion, any construction project on USM's campus has to be funded fully, meaning the money has to be deposited in USM's account before construction can begin. This created a little bit of a problem for Brett. In 2017, Nancy's nonprofit made two payments of $2.5 million, therefore hitting the $5 million number they pledged. Brett also received two payments for his supposed advertising duties that he never did, one for $500,000 and another for six hundred dollars So we talking $1.1 million. Brett already had millions committed to this project through funds that were intended to help the needy, but that still wasn't enough. 
A year passed and by 2019, the project was getting more and more expensive. Next thing you know, Brett needed another million and he had come so close, he wasn't about to stop pushing. So he requested to meet with the welfare officials in January of 2019 basically to twist their arm for more money. Dude didn't care if you had to take the food directly out of family's mouth, but it turns out that Brett's funds were only one part of an even larger scheme, one that includes embezzlement of millions of public assistance funds and is being called the largest public embezzlement bust in state oh, history. Whoa. All the misappropriations I didn't even know about any of that. Up, funds frozen, budget cuts, people getting fired. But as people was losing their jobs left and right, Brett and Nancy spent time every day trying to squeeze that last little bit of welfare money out to finish funding Brett's project. Hopefully these people getting laid off don't need unemployment. I hate to see the golf course that money went to. It's not that surprising when you see how many people get denied assistance for the dumbest reasons. The workers may not be aware, but the attitude of keeping as much money as possible away from those it's actually intended for is passed down from the top. From people like Nancy yeah, Newton, that's, that's squeezing so pennies up. for the that's bread so bars of the world. Nancy has already pled guilty to 13 felony counts of bribery, fraud, and racketeering yeah, that's for her part in what's being called that's absolutely the largest insane. case of public fraud in the history of the state. And there's tons of leaked text messages to show. Brett and Nancy work closely together. He even called her Nancy Santa because he knew every time she came around, it was Christmas for him. Never giving any thought to the pain he that's caused so to those who actually needed that money. At this point, charges have yet to be brought against Brett. And given his influence, especially in that state, dude being held accountable with something yeah, that may we'll not have to happen. See what Apparently, happens. his deposition was already canceled and hasn't been oh, wow. scheduled. And the chances are pretty high that he'll walk away from this with a slap on the wrist. Man, sadly, this stuff happens all the time as the system is built in a way that makes it easy for those in power to bend or just completely break the rules routinely and not be punished for it. Hell, a lot of times they're praised for it. Imagine how many of these. That's really how it is when they got a lot of money. It's, it's, just... it's crazy. It's actually kind of rough. Like people with that kind of money can do a lot, get away with a lot, just because like they got the money to pay for it. It's it's pretty messed up. It's pretty messed up. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something different about that situation. It's really messed up. Hopefully, some things change. Hopefully. We'll see what happens with it. And that's all for this one. I will see you in the next one. Peace.